Hello everyone, in this video we are going to make the surface tracker with the geometry nodes. With this you can project any image onto the deforming surface of the footage. So this is a really easy setup, so let's get start. Uh, first we are going to track our footage. So we have to load uh, the footage here. So we are going to use uh, this footage uh, for this uh, video. So first we have to define the area where we want to put the tracking markers. Or something like this. And then go to the track panel and hit this detect features. It going to add these uh, trackers. And in this panel we can change this to inside annotated area. And here we have to decrease the distance between the trackers and also the threshold. Let me even decrease further 0 0.01, 25, maybe 20. Yeah. Keep in mind that the more number of tracker will produce a really detailed deforming mesh. So let's uh, track these uh, footage. So we can see that the lot of tracking markers are not working properly. So basically we have to change this uh, setting. So let's go to the first frame and delete all the markers. The motion model we are going to use this location and for the match we are going to use the previous frame. Disable this pre-pass and enable the normalized. Then add the tracking markers. Now let's track this footage again. Now this is much better uh, but we have to remove some of these uh, markers which are not working properly. Another thing I would like to mention is that uh, we have to delete all the disabled track which are within in this region. Because our surface tracker will not work when there is a disabled track within this frame range. But if there are a disabled track uh, at the boundary of this footage that will not create any problem. Okay. So you can delete these uh, red tracks, these are disabled tracks manually or you can delete with this add-on. This is a free add-on which is available on my Gumroad page. So when you press this button, it's going to delete all the disabled track within this frame range. Okay. Next we have to delete those tracks which have these uh, spikes in their path. So we can use the filter option, clean up and then filter tracks. And here we can specify the threshold. Let's try three and then delete these tracks. Now this graph look much cleaner. We can also manually delete the tracks by selecting their path from this graph. Delete the track that has uh, spikes in their path. Uh, this looks good to me because solid track will produce a precise deforming mesh. So that's why we have to clean up these uh, tracks. Now I think this is uh, good enough. So let's uh, first select all the trackers and then go to the solve tab. And here we have to go to the geometry and we're going to link the empties to our tracks. So for that let's first create the collection so that we can put all the empties inside this. Then press this button and it's going to add these empties. Okay. Next enable this camera and then go to the scene and then press this button it going to set up this as background and these are the trackers okay now let's go to the layout and here we're going to build the surface tracker so let's add the plane and i'm going to name this as surface tracker and also name for this as surface tracker First we have to create the step grid which is really easy to handle when we want to scale up and scale down. So this is our normal grid. Let me go to the wireframe. Uh, let's increase to 10. Now if I increase the X I see it is not dividing it accordingly. So we need a step grid. Let me disable this. Now for that let's add the value node. Duplicate this one and then connect that to the Y and duplicate this again and this is our step let's type point 0.1 and then we need to divide this by this step 
connect to the vertices duplicate this one connect this to this and then this to the vertices now type one and also one now if i increase the size see it is subdividing this so this is our step create step create our next we're going to also store it is uv map that is required when we want to project the image onto this grid this is our uv map our next we need the transform node to align this grid with respect to our uh, trackers and now let's bring our tracker inside this and press this separate children so these are the trackers so we can't directly use their data into this grid first we have to transfer this data into any kind of mesh and then we can use that data for later okay so for that we're going to use uh, the mesh line so let's first add the domain and here change this to instances and after that we're going to add the mesh line node and then connect this to this so basically we have the same number of vertices on this mesh line as we have these instances this will make easy to transfer the position using the index node because there is a one-to-one -one correspondence so let's add the set position node and here we're going to add the simple index node change this to vector and this to instance because we are transferring from the instance domain and here we can use the index now let's connect that to this so this is our track data okay so now let's put this in a frame so this is our tracks data next we're going to add the sample nearest node so with this we're going to get the nearest index of the track for this grid okay so let's store that to this grid and change this to integer and this is track underscore index now let me join these together this is our track data and this is the grid so we have to align this grid so that it roughly confine this track data so let's rotate this by x-axis and then we have to increase the size of this grid something like this And I'm going to also increase it is a resolution. So this is good enough. Uh, let me delete this. Next, we're going to add the set position node. And then we're going to add the simple index node. And change this to vector. And for the index, we're going to use the track index. And if we connect this to this so we have this uh, grid which is collapsed onto the tracks points see it is following the tracks but there is problem because so there is a problem because the topology of this grid is changing with time which is not good when we want to project the image onto this mesh surface so to fix this uh, we're going to use the simulation node Okay. so before that we're going to also fix our uv map so let me show you the problem so this is the problem if we look into the uv map see it has these jagged edges which is not good okay so we can uh, resolve this by using a simple nearest node to sample the uvs before this uh, set position change this to vector and connect this to this and now we have this smooth uvs okay so we can store them change this to vector plug this to this and this is our uv map by the way i'm storing these uv maps onto the point domain uh, because later we're going to normalize this that will be easy for us so this is our basically the initialization of this grid so let's type as grid initialization okay our next we're going to add the simulation node 
so with this basically we going to store the initial grid okay let me go to the first frame and see it is stable it is not moving so we have stored our uh, grid or initial grid so this is like our store grid mesh okay now we have this stable grid first we're going to normalize the uv map and then we're going to update the position of these grid points so let's add the named attribute node press this uvs and then add the set position node connect this to this and let me show you the normalization so this is a one by one grid and this is our uv map so we have to normalize this so that it touch these boundaries and when we normalize this uv map that will help when we want to scale up or scale down the image which is projected onto this surface so let's add the bounding box node and then we need the set position node and here we need the map range node okay and we're going to map range the position of this uv space grid min to min and max to max now see it is so this is before and this is after next we have to bring this data into this grid so we can use the simple index node change this to a vector and we are need to transfer the position of this uv space grid here we can directly use the index uh, because we have the same number of vertices here and here next we need the store node so let's store these uv maps uv map so this is the normalized uv map so let's put this in a frame type normalized uv map okay so let me go to the full screen so this is our node tree for now now let's update the position of this grid so for that we can directly copy this setup duplicate this one or disconnect this and also unparent this so basically we are updating the position of this grid using the track data okay so here we're going to use the track index which is already stored in the grid initialization step okay so just connect this to this and this to the output now if we go to the first frame and go to the camera view see our grid is stable and it has this normalized uv map okay uh, next we can add the merge by distance node uh, because in this step so this is the initial grid and this is after the set position so some of the grid vertices are collapsed onto one track points so that may create problems so we have to merge them to create a clean mesh so that's why i have added this merge node and after that you can also add the subdivision surface node to make this surface smooth okay so this is our last step and after that we can add the set material node to test this okay so let me go to the first frame so this is the deforming surface and this is the setup for this so let's create a material for this and select that material here so let's add the image texture for this so here we're going to use our uv map that is stored onto this grid type uv map and let's add the image to this 
so I'm going to use this image this part image and so let's add the color ramp node and plug that into the alpha and here we're going to use this orange color maybe 30 emission so we have this so let's play with this color ramp something like this and then we have to change the option in the blend mode to alpha blend let's also add this bloom see we have this projected image onto this deforming surface and because our UV map is normalized we can easily scale up or scale down this image let maybe something like this change this to extent and here we can put this something like on this side see okay and this is the node setup for this surface tracker uh, this is it now i'll show you the preset which is made based on this technique so this is the preset so to use this first you have to track your footage uh, then you have to delete all the disabled tracks uh, using this preset or manually and after that you have to link the empties and put those empty in a separate collection and then select that collection here in this surface tracker modifier and first you can enable this show grid and adjust this grid so that it roughly confine your tracking markers and after that you can disable this and you can also add the subdivisions if you need to this grid and specify your material uh, then it will generate the deforming surface uh, based on your tracks it also calculate the approximate depth map that you can utilize in your material it output the uv map and the depth map that you can utilize here in the material section so you can get this tool uh, from the blender market uh, from gumroad page or from my patron page all the links are in the description so i hope you learned something from this video so if you like please like the video and subscribe to my channel for more updates so see you in the next video happy noting bye